One, two, three, boom, then. I guess we're live. Hello, Aliek. I hope I said that right. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Marco. I sure did. <laughs> it's, very, it's very nice to meet you. How are you? You as well. I'm doing fine. How are you? Yeah, I'm also good. I have to tell you something. Uh, basically, I'm not the biggest gamer in the world, so sometimes I play Counter-Strike, which is, I guess, ancient, uh, basically. But I did download World of Tanks a couple of days ago. I started playing it and I actually really enjoyed it. I enjoy, <laughs> I, I enjoy just, you know, crushing, I don't know, through fences, trees, buildings, blowing up other tanks. Uh, it, it's a really nice game. <laughs> Good, thank you. Glad to hear that. <laughs> what I was wondering, though, I mean, I know you're responsible for the, for the console version of the game. Um, what I was wondering, though, is I downloaded the PC version and it was about, uh, I don't know, 35 gigabytes of stuff downloading can that uh, roughly like that i think um and i was wondering with all these graphics all these whatever sound assets you have how do you actually store them and where do you store them and what kind of version control do you use to store all of that uh, how does that work yeah so we use several version controls uh the primary storage is perforce uh it's really good at storing digital assets um many gaming companies use it um for code we use Perforce, Subversion, and Git. Uh, so different teams use different version controls. Uh, but the console version um, uses Perforce for asset storage. OK. When you said when, when you just said uh, you're using Git Subversion and Perforce, uh, that means uh, so every team can decide. So one team uses Git, whatever, uh, for the code, uh, at least. Uh, but you don't mix up mm -hmm. different versioning systems inside a team, or do you also do that? Uh, we also do that. Uh, in fact, uh, when we put the final product together to ship to Microsoft or Sony uh, for publishing, uh, there are pieces that are coming out of Subversion, and there are pieces that are coming out of Perforce, pieces coming out of Git. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a mix of things. <laughs> okay. Um... That, that's interesting. I mean, I've, I've never worked with Perforce before, but for example, how does it how does it work in terms of if you update an image and uh, if there's some patches to be made? How is that stored? Basically, do you just have a huge, humongous repository of terabytes of stuff lying around, or how is that managed? That's exactly right. Uh, so binary assets, you know, they cannot be easily diffed in a text form. So every revision is stored separately uh, for an image. Uh, but we do call assets over time. So older versions of the same asset can be deleted from Perforce to reduce storage. So you can store you know, five, 10 latest revisions. Okay, I see. And do you also, um, do you, how much, how much of that, of assets and code do you share between the different versions? So the PC version, the console version, do, do they share anything at all? Or is there just some parts of it being shared or how does that work? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, the PC team actually helps us on occasion with our assets. So, for example, artists on the PC team would help us with tanks or maps, what have you, and they would send things to us. Uh, that could be shared logos and screens, you know, things like that. Uh, but I, I don't know. I really don't. Okay. Know. Yeah. Um, how, do, how many how many teams do you in any case uh, do you have working on these, these sorts of games in total roughly I mean um, uh, so on the console uh, side we have about 11 teams uh, think of artists developers devops QA producers um, am I forgetting tools engineers uh, obviously gameplay engineers uh, graphics engineers uh, we have roughly 160 people working on the game right. uh, and that's like the core team um, like i said we do get help occasionally from different teams um, so we can get help from our server team uh, we can get help from our pc team uh, you know we have talented artists and programmers all over the world so we'll lend a hand and it goes both ways okay i see even even within uh so the thing is i'm i'm Again, I'm not entirely up to speed with how the Xbox development works, with how PlayStation development works. But basically, even there, do you just share the same code base? I mean, is that all written in C++ no. or how does that work? Um, we do not share the code base with the PC version of the game or mobile version of the game. Um, but, but the... I guess you could say that 
uh, the server technology that we use behind the scenes the to manage uh, you know, player interactions is shared. We have a separate studio that's responsible for Big World Server, it's called. Um, and there are different versions of it and different games from Wargaming use this technology. Um, so that piece is shared in, in a sense, but they're not part of the console team normally. Um, on occasion, we need features from them and we'll work with them and they help us out. But then the client side, you know, what you download in the Xbox Store and PlayStation Store, uh, that's not shared. That's our uh, code. Um, and same thing with assets. Right. Um, what, what, do you, what do you actually download on the Xbox? What is the, the final product that is getting downloaded? I mean, it's not like an Excel file or whatever. What, what is you, uh, are you downloading in the end? Uh, yeah, it's especially put together... Uh, package either for PlayStation or Xbox. Um, uh, each platform has its own rules, you know, how you need to package it and present it. Um, you know, we actually have to send it to Sony or Microsoft for certification. So they go through their checklist of things that each package must have. Uh, and we know those rules ahead of time, of course. Um, so we have a process on our end with a bunch of tooling to support generation of this package. Um, it's not really visible to the user what that package looks like, right? All they see is a tile in the store. They click on it, it gets downloaded right. to their console, and you know you can play. Uh, but essentially, it's a binary file of some kind, and it has a bunch of code. It has a bunch of assets in it. Um, I, I was so I, I was actually wondering about the whole uh, release cycle, and uh, so because. A, a couple of naive questions from someone not too deep into the gaming topic. So, you, you uh, supposedly at one point you had your first big release, and then was that also put onto a uh, uh, supposedly a, a Blu-ray or DVD or something like that, or did that? Uh, <laughs> that happened before I joined the company. Uh, in fact, our very first console release of this game was um, for Xbox 360. Uh, which we sadly do no longer support. Uh, we ended that last year. Um, and I believe at that point it was a downloaded product. Um, I, I don't think we ever put it on a CD or a DVD or a Blu-ray for distribution. Okay. Um, we certainly could if we wanted to, but we're a multiplayer game and people are able to download it. Uh, it's not a small download, uh, of course. Um, it's about 26 gigabytes right now. Uh, if you were to get the game. So all of our releases are digital. Um, and in between releases, they are incremental. So you don't have to download the whole thing every single time. On occasion, it does happen uh, for major releases uh, where we need to blow away the old and download right. the new. But typically, uh, we release every two, three months uh, with minor updates and bug fixes. And um, you download a smaller incremental version. And of course, we are able to uh, release even smaller downloads with tiny bug fixes. So sometimes we discover some critical thing and we have an ability to release that into the wild uh, once it passes the certification on the publisher side. Mm -hmm. I see. So every two, three months, you said a, like a minor release uh, but, and mm -hmm. the major release, do you have like one, do you have like one major release yearly or every two years or how does that work? Uh, it's generally once a year. Okay. Okay. And then you have, as you already mentioned, uh, obviously you have people working on the Xbox store and on the PlayStation store, basically certifying your game. How is, how is, what does that whole process basically look like? What do they just kind of play it or do they work off of the same checklist they gave you or what happens? Uh, so I don't know how that process works exactly on the publisher side, uh, but there is a team of people on Sony and Microsoft side and they run the game through the gamut of things. Like, for example, you should be able to invite friends to the game, you know, and this is how it's supposed to work, right? Um, and they have, like, we have a replica of production environment. They have a replica of production environment. So, you know, we try to test the game ourselves as well before we send it, right? We have our own QA team and everything. Uh, but there are certain things that, you know, the publishers test. Um, I don't know what they are like. And then sometimes they come back to us and say, oh, 
this rule is not met or this thing is not working and it's supposed to, or what's going on. Um, you know, it's possible we miss it sometimes, but it's also possible it's the environment, right? Or they changed something on their end and didn't let us know, right? That's also possible. So, you know, our production team is in touch with, with them. Uh, you know, they'll help us out. Well, which brings us to the most important question. Do you have a PlayStation 5 already? <laughs> uh, I personally do not. Uh, <laughs> I'm still on PlayStation 4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> right but do you do you actually i mean i don't know if it's a secret but do you guys get like the new hardware in, in advance if you, for such a game to test it i mean is that something that we can talk about um, uh, i can't tell you the details but you know with any piece of hardware you know if we want to target something new uh we can get that um you know get a preview version of that yes. okay i see all right um actually th that um brings us to the question of uh, build pipelines, because I would like to know, so now, I mean, we have the, the download that you get from uh, the Xbox and PlayStation Store, um, but what, what uh, well, in general, what, what does the build pipeline look like? What is the build pipeline doing? And then at the end, how long does it take? But first of all, what does it look like for a game? Yeah, it's quite complicated. Um... To put it in perspective, uh, World of Tanks console is a really large game. It has over 3 million lines of code. It's written in C++, Lua, Python, and ActionScript. So we have a variety of languages. Uh, what you download in the store is what I would call the client. Um, there's also the server component. And then there's also the backend, a bunch of services that communicate with various pieces of the game, with uh, gaming platforms. Like, like Xbox Live or PlayStation Store. Um, so if we want to talk about the build pipeline, imagine putting all those pieces together, right? It's complicated. Uh, so let's talk about the client. Uh, that's what I'm most familiar with. Uh, so as I said, it's about 26 gigabytes right now. Um, the client consists of code, right? So basically game logic and what happens in the game and assets, right? Videos, audio, uh, images, Etc. Um, we download roughly 400 gigabytes of assets from Perforce, uh, and it's ever growing. Uh, we have about 700 tanks in the game, 80 maps, 12 nations, a uh, bunch of screens, right? The UI. Um, the code base itself is about 100 gigabytes, uh, all the libraries that we use. So, uh, you know, imagine syncing all of that. That is massive. Right? And Tennessee does, does that for us. Um, so then to build uh, this client, uh, we build uh, the code piece separately first. Uh, so most of that is MS build, compiling various C++ libraries. Um, and that can take anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour and a half uh, to build from scratch, mm -hmm. which we do nightly. Uh, and incremental builds take anywhere between half an hour to an hour uh, as people are checking things in throughout the day. Um, on the asset side, uh, it takes about nine to 14 hours to build the whole thing from scratch. Nine to 14 uh, hours. Yes. Uh, we do that weekly uh, just to make sure that all of our assets rebuild correctly from scratch. Um, and the time varies depending on the platform and the build machine capacity. Um, and then Throughout the week, uh, we build uh, the assets nightly as well, and that takes about an hour and a half, two hours. And then throughout the day, we build it incrementally as people are checking in new assets, new images, et cetera. Uh, that takes anywhere between 15 and 25 minutes. So TeamCity is continuously rebuilding the game throughout the week, throughout the day. Um, and then every night we generate a testable package of code of assets that gets deployed by our QA team to our internal environment and they test throughout the day. Uh, and this is just mainline development. Now when it's release time, which is almost all the time, <laughs> right? Because we yeah. release every couple months. Um, we also build our release version, which we call stable, uh, and that gets tested as well. Uh, so we have multiple teams testing different versions of the game. Uh, so once uh, the specific version is successfully tested and it's ready to be published. We throw it into this build process 
uh, that packages the game to be sent to the publisher. Uh, and that's where our tools and external tools come in. Uh, so they provide a bunch of tools, verification tools. So this package is put together, and that takes several hours. Uh, and then that gets deployed to our internal environment. So we confirm that an Xbox can download it internally, or a PlayStation can do that. And they play it, uh, and then we send it to the publisher. That is one massive crazy process. <laughs> yes, and that's just the client. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have the server. Um, you know, that takes about two hours to rebuild from scratch, um, and the core code of the server is in C plus plus, and that does not change too often. Uh, but supporting scripts in Python and Lua, they change throughout the day, right? So that's what gets packaged with the server package as well um, and deployed kind of in a similar fashion. I mean, the thing is, I've been, I've been working myself on a lot of backend applications, basically. And I know, especially with a lot of releases, how tricky it is uh, at the end to get a green build pipeline, basically, uh, and that everything is working. And I can just imagine, I mean, there's a lot of time involved in, you know, in the, in the whole process. I mean, is your pipeline always green? Is that always, is, that, is it basically <laughs> uh, tricky to get a green pipeline? Or uh, what does that look like? Uh, I am proud to say that we are generally green in terms of our nightly builds. Um, QA is able to get a new version every day and test because that's what they need to do during the day. Um, throughout the day, we rarely break our code or asset builds. Um, and CI builds certainly help with detecting that. Um, and people are generally really fast to fix the problems. Uh, you know, Besides notifications that we get from Team CT, we have our internal tools that actually email the person who touched the file last okay right so they make you know some change and break the build they will get notified about that specific file um so it it saves time in finding what the problem may be um so we are generally green yeah <laughs> well when we when we talk about uh, before we, we come to test um the um the, the whole infrastructure for for the, for your builds. I mean, do you have like do you have like so do you have Team City? Do you have and uh, how many uh, build agents do you have? Are they on the cloud or on premise? Or how does that, that whole thingy look like? Mm -hmm. uh, we currently have eighty six agents. Uh, they are all internal to us. Um, it's a mix of physical and virtual agents. Uh, we're actually moving towards all virtual. Uh, it's an ongoing project. Um, and you know, different agents are involved in building different pieces, of course. Uh, so some are more powerful than others. Uh, we use parallelization a lot within our builds, uh, so we can convert assets in parallel or you know, compile code in parallel to speed it up. But even with the times that I gave you earlier, it's a challenge, right? We only have so many resources. Um, you know, and it's a judgment call. You know, do we spend more money on the infrastructure? or on tooling or on developers, right? right yeah. what's more important. Uh, so speed is probably our biggest challenge at the moment. Um, you know, on occasion when the build does break and we are preparing for release, it's important for us to get a new build as soon as possible, right? Well, if we're limited by that hour and a half, two hour build time, right? That means people are waiting for it, right? So. There are things we can do on the hardware side, right? Im improve our hardware. Uh, we can also improve our algorithms for packaging the product. I, I was just wondering if you can basically throw more hardware at it or if it's really also uh, some other work that needs to be done to speed things up, basically. Yeah, it's not just hardware. Uh, there are some complicated algorithms to package um, uh, you know, the final clients, uh, final software. Um, there's compressions involved. Right, uh, have people experimenting with those. Uh, so you can get better compression, but you lose speed. Right, it's a trade-off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, we try to solve it in both hardware and software ways. And because you already mentioned tests, uh, so 
I guess the, the test is probably, is that manual QA testing or do you also have like an automated set of tests that basically proves the tank is still moving forward if, when, <laughs> when you press the right button basically? Or how, what's that look like? Yeah, we have both. Uh, so when I say QA, this is the manual test and they run through a gauntlet of scenarios, uh, you know, open a game, pick a tank, get in the battle. Uh, you know, make sure you press the button and shoot, stuff like that. Um, and anything they identify, they log for us, you know, as an issue or a bug. Um, and then we'll have a suite of automated tests. Uh, we have unit tests that test the very fundamental pieces of our code, right? Make sure two plus two is still right, four, so. right? Um, and we have uh, kind of a simulation that loads up battles and tanks on different consoles and runs through them, right? So like a robot playing the game, essentially, okay. right? Um, and that does tank interaction maps, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then reports are generated uh, based on that. Um, and then we have a bunch of tests for our tools. Uh, so we have a, tools that we developed internally that help us develop the game, uh, you know, work with assets, stuff like that. Uh, so we also have automated tests for those tools, right? To confirm that they do what they're supposed to okay. do. Okay. And that runs nightly. So in the morning when I come in, you know, typically we're green, you know, no reports, no errors in TMTT. But on occasion, you know, some tool will get, you know, stuck on something or just misbehave or do the wrong thing, and we investigate and. You know, fix it. And uh, the, the manual create testers are basically, uh, is, is that like professional, they have to, to, to manually play the game, the scenarios every day, yes. basically. Uh, like I say, it's all fun and games uh, for them. So they play the game every single day uh, and they go through essentially the same scenarios. If we're testing the same feature, right? Um, they go through the same scenario every day to make sure it still works the way we expect. Um, and you know, they are professional testers, right? It's their job. Um, so they're well-versed in playing the game and reporting issues, uh, identifying patterns, uh, documenting what they see. Uh, it's very important to give as much detail as you can, right? What were you doing when you encountered this bug, right? Uh, so it's a very important part of our culture. Mm -hmm. I see. What, what did you say from, from your perspective is the biggest, let's say, pain that you would like to uh, solve in terms of your build pipeline, something that you could improve or that, that you would like to see improve in the nearest future? Is there anything like that? Uh, other than speed, I would say we have very complicated dependency chains. Um, and when things break down on that rare occasion, uh, it requires a build engineer to help out and complete the chain or rerun the chain properly. And it's a problem in the sense that it takes a while to get the new build going. And it takes certain knowledge to understand how the chain is set up to generate the right artifacts, right? And you know, most of our developers are not experts in TMCT. They don't know how the build chain is set up behind the scenes, right? So if you have an obscure error uh, or problem, Right. Uh, usually, build engineers are more equipped to debug that thing in TMTT yes, yeah. and you know get it going. How 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 long is such a build chain basically in terms of build configurations? When you when it, I mean, how deep does such a chain get? Um, we have a chain of about three levels. Uh, that's the deepest that I can think of for assets. Um, there is also a chain that uh, generates that package that we send to Sony and Microsoft. Um, one other build engineer set that up. And that's more complicated in the sense that uh, we use this custom build runner that triggers a separate chain that is not connected in the UI, if that makes sense, right? Like uh, you can run a custom run, choose your parameters, and that gets passed on to this custom uh, build step, trigger a couple of different chains, and off they go. Um, so that's what I mean when I say you really need to know how things are set up to understand what's happening, how a product is built. Yes. How, how many, uh, I didn't ask, but how many build engineers are there? Just uh, just build engineers responsible for? Uh, yeah, pure build engineers. So on the client and server side, there's two of us, uh, full-time build engineers. Uh, and then 
on the uh, platform side, which is the backend services side, uh, they have a team of about four to five engineers. Folks who set up builds and debug them. And stuff right, like stuff that. like that. I'll tell you what, it is that that was super interesting to get a glimpse of uh, how the gaming and we only scratched the very, very surface of how the, the, the yes. whole thing works. Uh, <laughs> and I think we might need to do it again <laughs> to get a bit to, to get a bit deeper into uh, maybe the, your team city server. I don't know. But uh, thank you very much uh, so far for uh, giving us that glimpse. And I appreciate your time. And um, thanks for doing the interview. All the, all the egg. Thank My you. Pleasure.